how many of those named uh, things in there do you think there are? Did you count them? I did. Um, I'm going to say 29. Oh, my God. Spencer, are you serious? Yeah. There's 29. I had no idea. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am 360. Like degrees? Um. This here is Frank wearing his rodeo shirt. Oh, I feel like it's rodeo season. Is it rodeo season? I, it, I, I, do, I have no, I have no Words. way of knowing anything about the rodeo okay well i can imagine they say rodeo in california do they well rodeo drive rodeo drive where's that it's like the ritzy part where people like shop at the high-end stores rodeo drive but it's a rodeo so 360 it's not my first rodeo are you just a circle oh 360 um no i was going to be three six like my birthday okay but then i was like three six mafia people might get confused yeah so i it, can imagine how they, that would happen yeah <laughs> so when i just said how about 360 just like a circle yeah i'm a circle <laughs> <laughs> a big old circle how you guys doing hope all is well hope you guys are in good health um because not all of us are oh my god uh, <laughs> i come uh, here to be depressed hey that's what that's what i'm here for it's a beautiful day it's a beautiful january 17th january i need to get <laughs> awake <laughs> it's a beautiful june 17th um probably the polar opposite of january actually definitely the polar opposite of january 17th because that's six months ago is it well it's one right i thought it was december <laughs> now usually i'm the one who messes your number or calls you yeah, on messing right, numbers right, up right. so i'm messing numbers up and that's all right i feel like it's that's a that's a, someone's birthday that we know but june 17th yeah no january oh i don't know we know a lot of january's um, but yeah, beautiful day. So I have a little qualm. Um, yesterday, we, we talk about holidays here sometimes, talk about Christian things all the time. Um, yesterday was National Fresh Veggies Day. But don't eat them yesterday. If you ate your veggies yesterday, you messed up. Because hmm. today is National Eat Your Vegetables Day. Really? Yeah. Jan- June 17th, Eat Your Vegetables Day. June 16th, uh, Fresh Vegetables. So I'm assuming... What I'm assuming, what I'm calculating here okay. is you buy the vegetables or pick yesterday. Them. You or harvest. Pick them, probably. Yeah. Harvest. You harvest them. Yeah. You're too tired. You're going to go home and eat a Whopper from Burger King. No. Then the but... next day, t- no lettuce. Then the next day, you wake up feeling rejuvenated. Then you eat your vegetables. All right. I love vegetables. Or maybe yesterday you made the soup that was like. You prepared your vegetables? Yeah, like. It, it was only ready today. Yeah, but I feel like part of like it was fresh vegetable day. Yeah. Means you got to eat it raw. All right. Mm. Yeah, it needs to be fresh. Yeah. It needs to be a crunch. Okay. A carrot. Carrot crunch. Oh, okay. Nah, neither here nor there. But uh, yeah, eat your, eat your vegetables today. Um, Don't miss it. Because you won't be able to eat vegetables again for another 364 days. <laughs> That's not true. But yeah, um, hot one today. 92 degrees. Really? Uh, yeah, beautiful. I know down south it's very hot, um, and we're more north. North. We're northerners, but uh, it's still um, it's still hot. It, 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 but I think it's a little better. It was very windy. This is the Weather Channel, I guess. Uh, Weather yes, Channel holidays. Yesterday was very still, but today is very windy. Just like life. But anyway, guys, let's not let's not uh, what's the word? Beat around the bush here. It's Friday. Okay. The eager. The point. Let's not be- belittle the point. We're here. We're all here. Us and you. The gang's all here. The gang's Frank for a reason. And that's because on Friday, like clockwork, you know, talk about dates and all that. Yeah. Every Friday, you know what to expect. Yeah. Not wind, not weather, but Dr. Seuss Friday. Yeah. <sighs> Dr. Seuss Friday is a very important day. I wouldn't say special. I wouldn't say exciting. I would say important. Yeah. Because it's the day we stop everything we're doing. Or continue. You can listen to us in your headphones and make your vegetables. We pick a Dr. Seuss book out of his vast repertoires. And by his, I mean Theodore Geisel. Mm -hmm. Smart man. Great man. Proud man. Dead man. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we pick a book and we talk about it. And you may be asking yourselves why, Spencer, 
360 and frank <laughs> why are we reading kids book on a christian weather holiday channel <laughs> and i'll tell you why because those books damn it mean something listen i was just about to say that we're an inclusive channel because some people listen to us in the car okay and you know when you have the kids and it's either yeah. the kids channel does disney channel still exist i don't even know like on the yeah. radio on the radio oh, i don't know yeah or or parents channel and with this you can do both no no oh this isn't for kids okay that that you i'm glad you brought that up though because that's what people are thinking like, okay should i get my kids yeah oh this? family friendly no. no we say damn it <laughs> we do we did we physically abuse frank on the regular no it's it, it, it's kids books written for kids but by an adult, a smart Let's adult. Let's just not even call it a kid's book then. Let's We're say not. Let's just call it a book. Simple literature. Well, you know what? I'll call, I'll, I'll call it a kid's book because I'll call us children. Okay. Because we're all children of God. That doesn't change. Children of God book. How about that? Okay, yeah. All right. right. So we're going to read a book. We're going to use our big adult brains and we're going to get the meanings that are meant to uh, osmosize yeah. into a kid's head. I don't know why I'm being friends to those or I'm being kind and charitable to those around me. I just like Dr. Seuss. Yeah, and this is this is brain work for real because um I was I, I was looking on the internet. Uh, you want to introduce the book and then I'll just say what I'm about to say. All right, we're reading. There's a walket in my pocket. Okay, so there's a walket in my pocket, and um I I looked quickly on the internet, right? And there's an old Reddit post from four years ago, and the guy is saying, "I hate this book. Oh, this book is so stupid. Ooh. Was Dr. Seuss drunk when he wrote it? Ah, and he's he's writing on Reddit, and he's saying. You know, he, he, he wrote good books. He wrote um, The Lorax about the environment. And yeah. he, he wrote Oh, The Places You'll Go and, and all these inspiring books. But this book, my kid won't have me stop reading it. And will somebody please tell me if, there, if there's a deeper meaning to it. Now, unfortunately, this, this, this post four years ago, I'm sure the kid grew up by now. The dad doesn't care any longer. But what I'm saying is it is mind calisthenics to... Uh, I no, he, Dr. Seuss was not. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say he wasn't drunk when he wrote it. We're going to find out. And, and you can find something in it. <laughs> well, now's the the telltale time. Uh, maybe after we finish this, you can attach a link to that four year old Reddit post. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, so I think this starts. Wait, what? So it says there's a walk in my pocket, and then it says. And a findo in my window, and a nook case in my bookcase. But in, then the book starts. Yeah, like on the um, what's that called? The cover. <laughs> okay. Before even the title mm -hmm. page. Yeah. Here we go. Wait, was this? Huh. This is by Dr. Seuss, but I guess it looks Dr. Seussy. I think it's, it. It's, I think it looks Dr. Seussy. I guess so. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Did you ever have the feeling there's a wasket in your basket, or a neur neuro in your bureau, or a wasset in your closet? Sometimes I feel quite certain there's a jerton in the curtain. Sometimes I have the feeling there's a zlock behind the clock. And that zelf up on that shelf, I have talked to him myself. That's the kind of house I live in. There's a nink in the sink and a zamp in the lamp. And they're rather nice, I think. Some of them are friendly, like the yacht in the pot. But that yaddle in the bottle, some are friendly, some are not. I like that zable on the table and that jar up on, under the chair, but that bofa on that sofa, well, I wish he wasn't there. All the nuppards in the cupboards, they're good fun to have about, but that nooth crush on my toothbrush, him I could do without. The only one I'm really scared of is that vug under the rug and that quimney up the chimney, I don't like him not at all. And it makes me sort of nervous when that Zoll scoots down the hall. But the yeps on the steps, they're great fun to have around. And so are many, many other friends that I have around. Like the Teller and the Neller and the Se Geller and the Deller and the Beller and the Weller and the Zeller in the Cellar. And the Geeling on the ceiling and the Zower in my shower. And the Zillow on my pillow, I don't care if you believe it. That's the kind of house I live in, and I hope we never leave it. He was drunk. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He wasn't? No. Whoa. Listen, I'm a writer. Oh. I'm a writer, and I'm also an illustrator. Okay. And I, I can vouch. Do you have a pen name? 
360. <laughs> I can vouch for um, Dr. Seuss that nothing is unintentional. That he didn't just, oh, the editor wanted, um, come on, we need a book. And so he was drunk and he rhymed words and he taught kids how to read. Yeah. Um, especially an artist. I mean, not, not to take away from writers, but especially artists. Everything's intentional. Um, how you draw something, the position that the characters are in, um, and, and the words, the words you choose, the numbers you choose. And so I... I uh, I think that it's like looking at um, modern art okay. and saying that's just a circle. It's not. The artist did it for a reason. Did it that way, that color, that shape, that size. Yeah. Now, most times you read this book, we both have never heard it before. And I was hearkened back to when I had COVID. and um, Fever dreams. No, <laughs> we couldn't work together. This, yeah. this was not enough, This this divider. So I would go in the car, I would read this Dr. Seuss book, say my thoughts on it, and then um, you would read it, remember, and you'd put me up. I was yeah. I was like a floating square, and I would say my part. So I said, um, let me let me do that today. And so I did read the book ahead of time. That's how I knew about the Reddit post. That's how I knew about the Reddit post. And, um, and then I really felt like, ooh, challenge accepted. I don't think it's meaningless. Okay. And so um, I do have my notes. Well, so as you were talking, I was I was reading. And um, one thing is, you know, it just gets into blah, blah, blah. There's a teller and a neller and a seller. Yeah. But in the beginning, right? Yeah. It starts with, did you ever have a feeling there's a basket in your basket? Right? Okay. I, your, I also picked up on the word bureau. feeling. So I get a bingo point for that. Um. And then it, it goes to sometimes I feel quite certain there's a dirt in the curtain. Sometimes I have the feeling there's a yeah. clock in the clock. Right. And then he's starting to feel like like in so <laughs> follow me now. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. So in the beginning, it, it, it's you see these it, look follow look at these images. Yeah. There's an image. He has a feeling there's something there. Um, there's a feeling like, and they're hiding. If you see the lock on the clock or the certain in the curtain, there it's like, is it there? Is it not? Right. But then he starts getting this confidence of him, him actually seeing it. Right. And that self up on the shelf, right here, right here. I have talked to him myself. He's and then that is like he allowed himself to be like, they are all there. And then boom, now when he's he's looking at the zamp and the lamp, he's looking at eye to eye. Right. What does that mean? Oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> you stopped right in the middle of the book. Um, <laughs> I was going to go through every page. <laughs> I was. Um, so this is what I want to say, too. The, um, what I'm about to say or what I got from the book or what I think that I could get from the book, what I could get from that basket of vegetables. Um, if 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 somebody out there says, oh, she's reaching. OK, this is what I have to say that, to them. I don't care if you believe it. That's the kind of house I live in. And I hope we never leave it. Uh, that's the last page of the book. So okay. I, don't, <laughs> I don't care if you know, but no. Um, interesting. The first page, you said that he had a feeling. Um, so on the first page, I noticed that uh, that he looked worried, even though the waistcoat looked nice. Yeah. So he went into it um, trepidatious. But um, OK, so the first thing was the basket. And since it's a spiritual podcast, um, I, I, I thought about Jeremiah 24, 2, um, where one basket had very good figs uh, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten because they were they were bad. So it just started off. I'm starting off the book with that little meditation in mind because um, I'm thinking of it spiritually. So there's because in this in this his friends, shall we call them? Some of them are good and some of them are naughty. Yes. Because um, there's something I don't like at all. I think the the guy on the couch, he's not too happy with. He's not too, he looks like a freeloader. He looks very nice, though, which is unfortunate. He looks very entitled, but this guy looks a little um, wary of him. And um, right. So a lot of the pictures, I find that the, that the little guy looks hopeful. Mm. He hopes that they, they're friendly, that they stay friendly, that, you know... So, f I love the word hope. Okay, so like, w in the book, you can see that some of them are good and some of them are bad. Yeah. Um, 
he's really scared of the one under the rug and and so on and so forth. And I just thought like good and bad does exist in the world. Yeah. Um, and Proverbs 15, three, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. Mm. So like that's saying that there's good and bad in the world. And um, I, I also thought of this one when, when, you, when um, I was reading it, Hebrews 13, two, be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So um, he, this, this little person in the story is acknowledging things that aren't seen by other people or aren't um, acknowledged by other people. Yeah. And he's saying, I don't care if you agree with me or not. I know that they're here. Some of them I'm more friendly with than others. Um, some of them uh, I'm, I'm actually afraid of. This sounds like psychopath. I don't know what to say. Now, do you think it could be spirits? Spirits. Spirits. Well, that's why I just said right now I sound like a little psycho. Saying no, this. hear me now. Spirits, right? Well, there are good and bad angels. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, the good bad ones aren't called angels still, are they? Yeah, in the Bible they are. Demons. The devil. Mm. How about this? Hear me now. I think I figured it out. We live in an earthly world, yes. right? Yes. And it doesn't even... It doesn't... We. It, if, uh, I can tangible... I can make this tangible okay. and say sp individuals like the, like this in this book. But let's just talk about spirituality concepts that are flowing through life, right? Okay. This is what I'm going to say about this book, right? I think it's that idea of things that are not of this world intertwined in this world. And the more you open your eyes to see them, mm -hmm. the more they're there, right? And we talked about that before of like, don't do Ouija boards and stuff because you're playing with things that you don't understand. And also there's good things everywhere. Right. So what makes me say that is because I think, you know, on earth where we don't have to see any of this stuff, right? Like we're on earth. Right. And then if you try, if you like try to thin that veil, mm -hmm. then you start to see it. And is that why does that explain in the beginning? It's just a feeling. I have a feeling you're right. that I'm not alone in this universe, you know? Yeah. And then it's like, there's these things here that are like hiding. He's like, but he does look hopeful. Yeah. Like it's, you know, he looks a little afraid on the very first page, but he does look hopeful. But and it, so it, that's interesting. Once again, is that first page fear really fear or is it the idea of, could I be the, right? Yeah, no, it's just, is there something else? The first, the first thing of uncertainty is that it's uncertainty. Right. Is there something there? And then he starts thinking of all the like, the other things and then he starts getting more curious right the curiosity of yeah. maybe we're not alone maybe earth is not just the earth there's something more deep right in it. and like i said he uh he's not there yet so he's looking and that's locks right behind the clock and he kind of feels it but he doesn't see it right and only and i mean only like i said before when he said and that zelf on the shelf i have talked to him myself i i in the beginning i said that I unlocked it but it, there's this like there's this i feel like realization of like you know um well just with like god where it's like well i speak to god every night you know what i mean right and, and it's like you start being like you are confident yeah that's uh, for me in the beginning is uncertainty then it's curiosity and then that's confidence confidence in something more okay you can't tell me there's not a god i i know that i have conversations with him okay you know what i mean yeah and once he has that confidence, or dare I say faith, that's when he can see everything. Right. And it's all there. This is the kind of house I live in. There's a yachtle in the bottle. Look at that. And he's just having a blast. And then obviously, you know, in spirituality, then you see the things that you, you don't like so much, right? Yeah. And that's on, good on too, right? That you don't, just because you believe in, in God and angels, don't trust or entertain every thing that is unseen yes because that's dangerous too you can't be comp we told you about that keeping our our armor on and keeping yeah our safety around ourselves yeah like, so he does he does use his intuition for some of them yeah, like i don't, I don't like that well you yeah. said that guy looks nice but he just had not have a good feeling yeah, about feel, it. and that's the thing we, we we do say that we're like the more you open yourself up to the you know spiritual world if you will that's on both sides right. you know like you're you're opening yourself up for good and bad and you need to be aware of that. And that you're right. That is what the armor of God is. And so he is aware of that. It's not right. all. Right. But now he's just seeing all of the these things. 
yada yada and just to get to the end to finish my one thought then there's that confident i don't care if you believe it that's a kind of house i live in and i hope we never leave it and so it's like there's that confidence of you know what i i don't care if you don't see what i see if you don't believe what i believe that no there's no god or there is no yaddle in your bottle and also like sometimes non-believers look at believers as thinking everything is good so like if i believe in god then i only believe in everything is good everything is rainbows um but that's not true You, you you when you believe in god you 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 still believe in evil you still believe in that bad things could happen or exist or out there um i feel that people sometimes put believers in a box of yeah. being naive yes naivete naivete i there's somebody looks like the grinch where was it i looked and i said uh, this guy looks like the grinch there's grinch lookalikes i feel like always um here's my question which one was the grinch here's he looks my- like the grinch is um geeling he um he must be on the ceiling. <laughs> Do you see him? That would make sense. Yeah, I see him. Now, my... Is that the Grinch? What? Am I wrong? Remember we learned in one of the books that the Grinch is a type of a animal. Type, a type of person. That's funny. So um, how many um, how many of those named uh, pe- things in there do you think there are? Did you count them? I did. Um, I'm going to say 29. Oh, my God. Spencer, are you serious? Yeah. There's 29. I had no idea. Oh, wow. <gasps> 29. But um, and so they have crazy names, right? Because it's Doctor Seuss, and it's like, uh, Teller, Neller, Zepp, Zoll, Quimney, Vug, Buffett. Um, but again, just I'm not saying that in any way, Doctor Seuss is sent me this message. But I'm just saying it's 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 like it's a cool connection that in the Bible, Joshua 15, um, it's talking about the inheritance to the tribe of Judah, yeah. and it names every single one of the clan, and there's 29 of them. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's funny because if you look in the Bible with our our our, our modern language, it seems like Dr. Seuss's names like Kinna and Damana and Adada, Bizioth and Zigzag and Madamana. Did you say Zigzag? Tell me that uh, doesn't say what's thirty Joshua fifteen thirty one. Joshua Joshua Ziklag. <laughs> Whatever. <Not> zigzag. <laughs> <laughs> it's zigzag. He yeah. always runs in zigzags. Yeah. So um. I think that it, it, it is very interesting. It goes through um, more than just rhyming words, plus the rhyming words. That's that's actually double duty for, for Dr. Seuss. Not He didn't phone it in. He did the rhyming words. He did the, you know, but also I feel, I, I do, and I'm, I'm serious, I do feel that it is a, a journey of a book and not just, the one we read, I, I admit it, the other one, remember the one we read and it was like literally oh yeah it I, can't, was, I can't remember yeah but um yeah i think my thing with it is if you take out all the rhyming words mm-hmm. and replace them with characters i think right. you do get a different book and i dare i say it's a book about believing there's something greater right or or out there that, that you, this is not just it and then searching for it right, right? like having a spiritual journey gaining confidence and faith and then with that confidence and faith, not letting it falter just because other people You're right. haven't gotten to the point you are. You're right. And not, you know, he's accepting of his life at the end. He says, I don't want to change it. And I think we talked in a very no. early podcast about our our house being our, the body being our house being our body. Yeah. Like our church, the church being a temple yeah. being our body. And he says, you know, I'm okay with this house. But it, like the things he couldn't see at all was, I think, what scared him the most, right? Yeah. It was like the under the rug in the chimney and racing down the hall. So if he couldn't see it at all, he seemed especially afraid. But you, I said he doesn't want to change it. And you said he does. Doesn't want to. No, he doesn't. He doesn't want to change it. No. I know. That's what I just said. Yeah. Um, if you go to the page about the Nuth Crush, I'm going to direct you towards Psalm 37, 12 and 13. And in Psalm 37, 12 and 13, it says... Um, Dot, dot, dot. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. But the Lord laughs at the wicked for he sees that his day is coming. So, you know, things that that make us afraid. He doesn't like the um, Nuth Grush most especially. Yeah. Um, but God laughs at them. It's like, 
God acknowledges the wicked, but he's not, you know, he t- he, he's going to take care of it. Well, yeah. And I, I even think that that's a uh, part of the end saying I would never leave it. Mm-hmm. It's once he's opened up to all the good and bad, he's saying, I'll take it all. I- right. I'll, I'll take all of it rather than live not knowing with that original uncertainty of if anything's there. Right. There's going to be good. There's going to be bad. And you're going to get more of it. Right. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, like walking through life um, with affliction, you know, he, he seems, yeah, he seems to be okay living with these, like, he, you know, sit on the couch and this thing is sitting next to him. And it's like, there used to be a commercial. I think, was it depression or something? It used to follow the person around. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, like a shadow. Yeah. There, there was even... Um, there's like one for um, IBS, I think, or Crohn's. It's like, not today, Crohn's, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, people who have to live with afflictions, physical or mental, you know, you can't eradicate things from your life usually. Yeah. It's But it's learning to live with, yeah. you know, and he had so many friends with the Zens and the Zols or something. And then, um, no, Zol wasn't a good one. Um, that you, Then you can take the, bo- the Bofa, you know. He had so many friends in the cellar, which I thought was funny. Because when I first looked at it, I thought, is this a hell thing? Because it has the furnace and they're gambling. (laughs) Um, But he said no, that he was very friends with them, which I liked after I realized that. Yeah. Um, But, yeah. Huh. Interesting little book. I'll give it that. More than I thought we'd get out of it. Yeah. um, I did read it. And I did get a lot out of it. I just didn't put my thoughts together. <laughs> that's that's the croak and crow's motto right there. I have a lot to say. Just haven't really put my thoughts together. But I do, I do denounce the guy who said that Dr. Seuss was drunk when he wrote that one. Um, yeah, maybe he, maybe he maybe it's because he's never checked to see if he had a walk in his pocket. Yeah, well, if you have eyes to hear, you know. <laughs> yeah. If you have eyes to hear, if you have ears to hear, eyes to see, you can read it and just say, "Oh, the baby likes it because it's rhyming and has yeah. cute pictures." Or you can dive deeper, whatever you feel comfortable doing on that day. Whatever you feel comfortable, we're not trying to make anyone uncomfortable out here. If that was too much for you, call this hotline. <laughs> <laughs> croak and crow. I'm a victim of Croak and Crow's um Dr. Seuss Friday. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday uh, for a one word Wednesday. That'll be exciting. Maybe the word will be walk it. The heck does that mean? Only you will find and the, it. And the guy said that um, he's mad because there was no walk it in the book. That's right there. I, I know, but it's I, on I, the cover. Yeah. It's not in the pages. All right, guys. We'll be back. Peace.